So hello, um, for those of you that don't know me, I am Dr. Kim Godwin. I am an instructional designer with MTSU Online. And with me today monitoring the chat is Dr. Karen Hines. She is our newest instructional designer. Um, so uh, we're, I'm very excited she's here, both in this chat as well as at MTSU. Um, so as you start to have questions and need things, she's been here long enough that you can direct all emails and phone calls directly to Karen. Uh, you can just go ahead and just hit forget on Kim and Tara. I'm just kidding. We would, we would never do that to Karen, nor would we make y'all have to do that. So, but you now have three options. So if you can't find one of us, you have two more. Um, so feel free to reach out to her as you have questions or need things. Uh, we are here to talk about video note today. And, uh, creating meaningful engagement for faculty and students in your online, remote, synchronous, asynchronous, all of the things that get listed in that, things that happen in D2L, um, classes that you have going on right now or into the future. Um, I don't know if you've had an opportunity to look, but we have quite a few presentations coming up over the next few weeks. Um, so the LT and ITC is fantastic about scheduling them as well as sending out uh, the emails to to have you register and then the reminders as well which are really great um but if you have time and want to take a look at what's coming up those are on the stay on course faculty website that's still out there mtsu.edu stay on course the faculty website there's a calendar right there and you can look at everything that we have scheduled at this point new things keep being added um, as more and more needs uh, become apparent so Feel free to check those out, get registered for those. We've got some fun ones coming up. I know that I am doing one on gamification and gameful learning coming up. Um, and we've got some on alignment of student learning outcomes and some backwards design and understanding instruction hours uh, and what that looks like in an online course as opposed to uh, a face-to-face -face course, it's really easy to look at our time in a face-to-face -face course because we physically are standing there looking at people or even in a remote course, but how is that different in online? So we'll talk about that some too. Uh, and then there's, Lane's got a couple coming up that are on intelligent agents and awards and cool stuff like that. So make sure that y'all are checking some of those out uh, as they become available just to give you the next level of how to use D2L and how to engage with your students in the best possible way. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started on this because I know that uh, you are here to see how D2L works and how we can make this video note thing happen in our class. Um, so we will go ahead and get started. And then as you have questions, again, Karen is going to be monitoring the chat um, and we will get to those questions as we can. At the end, we'll try to answer some as we go if they're specific to what we're talking about, but we'll definitely get to them at the end. Um, and let's get started. So I will do a screen share. And I can't see it. Look, y'all get to see my whole screen. <laughs> so there we go, MTSU Online. Okay, so today we are talking about video note, uh, meaningful engagement for faculty and students. And I don't know what that meant, but um, so by the conclusion of this workshop, you should be able to identify what you need to know to utilize video note, get excited about engagement with students and feel confident using video note in your courses. Uh, so I'll talk about this again in a little bit, but I'm, I'm being very intentional about my outcomes for this. I'm, I'm trying to use some different verbs to kind of get y'all thinking about those things in the long term and what that could look like um, and uh, how you want to do that. Because we're going to actually talk about some of those things, not just today, but moving forward. Um, a lot of you know about blooms but you may not know um, as many of the other ones that are out there so these are actually from um, fink's significant learning chart um, and we'll send that out as a resource for you but um, these are some of the higher order ones uh, that he talks about in his awesome list of verbs um, and we love providing you with list of verbs so that you don't have to go searching for things so we'll definitely send that out as a resource later but that is why you're like, what? those are a little bit different. I don't remember seeing get excited. So um, that is why that one is in there. So why video notes? So students and faculty crave interaction with each other in their courses. Um, students crave it because they don't like living in a bubble. 
you crave it, at least I assume that you crave it, um, because you're sitting there in your class and you're just staring blankly at a screen. It's way more fun if you can actually talk to people or see facial expressions or hear them or see them getting excited about things or really feed off of their energy. The same reason that we like face-to-face -face classes is the same reason that we like remote and synchronous classes. We can get those same things from an asynchronous course if we are utilizing the right tools and techniques. Uh, and video note is one of the ways to do that. So um, to talk to you just a little bit about some of that theory stuff that and pedagogy that we like to bring in because education is cool. Um, last week, uh, Lane did a presentation on discussions and she discussed a little bit about uh, the community of inquiry and the three spheres. So a very short, what that is, is it the, the content, uh, so the stuff in your class, it's the interaction with you, so the interaction with the faculty member, and then it's the interaction with peers. So if we are not creating opportunities that we are meeting all three of those things, we're missing out on that intersection in the middle where the greatest level of learning really does occur. We're missing out on where we connect with them personally and where they connect with each other personally. And some of that loss of interaction, if we aren't being intentional about our interaction, is that we miss out on perspectives. Um, I have the perspective of my world from the world that I've grown up in and the experiences I've had, and you have yours. And every single one of us has a different one. If we are only communicating between me and one other person, we're only getting those two perspectives. So once we start bringing everybody else in, we see different, different areas of things. We get exposed to more diversity. We get exposed to more inclusivity in our activities and create just greater opportunities for that, that learning engagement. So we really want to be intentional about that. And, and that is part of why I kind of carry that into this video note too, because when we're doing video note, you get to see people, you get to hear people, you get to picture what's behind them and in their space. And we learn a lot about somebody by what's in their space. You know from my space that there are four-legged children in my world um, and that that probably has a lot to do with who I am as a person. Um, you know from my space that, well, you may not be able to quite tell because I think I've got it blocked out, but I may not be the world's most organized human being on the planet, but I try really hard. Um, so there's things that you really do learn about each other and you learn about people's perspectives and what they appreciate and what they enjoy and what makes them happy when you can see it and hear it. Um, so that's why um, it's really important to have that opportunity within your class. That and if we're not creating podcasts or videos or um, I don't know, different animated opportunities within our courses, it's very stagnant. Um, I like to use my word of correspondency. Um, that's not a word. So the English people are probably going to have a fit, but I'm sorry. Um, it's correspondency. It's when you really are, you, you watch a, a video of a faculty member um, who may be standing against a blank wall kind of talking at you. Um, you read a textbook uh, or a, a couple of articles or something like that. Um, you read a discussion and then you type a discussion or you take a, a quiz or you write an essay and submit it. Those are very correspondency in nature and don't necessarily lend themselves to that personal engagement and personal way of communicating. So video note allows for you to take it to that next level. Um, so video note really can create some of those um, significant learning experiences um, because as I'm about to show you uh, in Fink's research and his significant learning um, spheres, it, three of those categories are a, a little bit different from what you are used to in blooms. And those are the three that I really wanna focus on a little bit as we're talking about creating meaningful engagement. Um, so get one home. there we go. Okay, so uh, creating significant learning. So this is, this picture um, is of his taxonomy of significant learning. So. Okay, we've got foundational knowledge. We know what that is. And if you're thinking about it in terms of blooms, those are going to be your lower lower order thinkings, like the first two, like remember and understand. Um, they're going to be pretty basic. It's the um, 
here is where you get basic knowledge. Here is where you retain basic knowledge. We're not really striving for creation of knowledge or um, an analytical concepts. It's really like, here's this, here's this, here's this. And then we have for Fink, we have application. So um, if you're thinking about that again, in terms of blooms, that's gonna be like the middle two, uh, like we're headed towards higher order, but we're really kind of in the middle two. Um, it's about, um synthesizing at this point we're starting to think about how we're applying the information um but still we're not quite to the level of create um we're kind of more in like we're taking the knowledge and we're applying it to something else that we know or we're taking something that we know and we're applying it to this new information that we've been presented and then in things we go to integration and that's where we take it to that next additional step of analysis and then synthesis um, and even some creating at this point, we're getting into the, the higher order thinkings. These really do fall at the higher order of his. Now it is completely awesome and acceptable if in your course, those three areas are the ones that you focus on because you have met the needs of your students um, in a place where they are learning and engaging with their knowledge and taking things to the next level in terms of their learning sets. The difference that happens is when we're looking at at Fink and um, creating significant learning opportunities, we really are playing into the affective domain and where they are and how they feel. Um, if you can just for a second, and you don't have to like raise your hand or share or anything, um, but if you can just kind of for a second, if you can think about a time in your life where you were learning about something new or you were experiencing something for the first time, the level that it is connected with your memory, if it was something you felt, um, something that moved you in some way, something that connected you to something bigger than yourself, um, something you participated in that really kind of, it impacted you in your perspective. That's what he is talking about with these things. And that's what I am saying that you can get there with video notes. So it's about that, the human dimension and um, thinking about yourself as well as others uh, and how we're making those connections with each other. It's about caring, um, taking it to the next level of caring for yourself and caring for others, but really also caring about feelings and interests and values. So when I was mentioning the outcomes earlier in that first slide, and I said, you can see from a video note, things that people are interested in, things that they care about, things that they value, you can see in my world that I value my puppies. You can see when you have conversations with me that I value different components. I am really big on making connections with people and learning about that individual person. And I don't know if y'all have thought about it or not, but the one thing in the world that we know better than anything else in the whole world is ourselves. And it is also the thing that we can talk about the most. We like to talk about ourselves. We're good at it. Like it's the we own that. It's our thing. We're really, really good at it. Uh, so if we can create some opportunities for our students to talk about themselves and talk about the things that they have feelings about, and we can connect with those feelings and show them that caring, they're going to be immediately more engaged in what it is that we're doing in the course. If they can see those things in us as faculty in their classes, and they can make those personal connections with us in terms of our feelings and our values, and they can gain from how excited we get talking about something, they get more excited about what it is that they're doing in the class, and they're more motivated about what they're going to be doing in the class. And then the final level for Pink is actually um, learning how to learn. And it's about being a better student, um, self-directed learning, inquiring about a subject it's about taking your learning to the next level and creating a place in yourself that you want to go out and learn more you want to leave your student at a point that they're like i want to know more about that and i want to go find it i want to be better at this i want to connect with this this the faculty member talked about this and this is exciting to me and i want to know more about it so they'll either reach out to you or they will look through other research or resources that are out there to try to find out more about it. But they will start making those connections if you are able to get them to that point that they really are excited about learning about those activities. Um, and again, some of that really does come back to when you hear somebody's tone 
or when you see their facial expressions, you really do get to take it to a different level. If it is a discussion or an assignment that is just black and white print, it's harder to see that. Um, you know, we're not always perfect at our print communication. I'm sure none of you have ever sent or gotten an email that that wasn't exactly what was meant by either the recipient or the sender. Um, and so trying to figure that out is sometimes a little bit of a challenge. So if you were able to do this in a different way, it really can make a difference uh, with your student and with your student engagement. So that is very much a crash course in significant learning. Um, I am more than happy to have conversations with y'all about this more down the road, um, but I could talk about this for hours, but you're here for video note, not significant learning. Other than that's where this comes from for me. Um, so let's talk about how we create a video note. We're just gonna jump right into it. So um, those of you who have taken, uh, taken, look, taken classes with me, those of you who have been in presentations with me before, um, please go ahead if you want to and minimize us if you haven't already and open up your D2L and go into um, a class. If you've got a development shell, that is great because then you can post something in it and not feel like you've broken anything. Um, but go and take a look and kind of go along with me in your D2L um, as best as you can to look at how we're gonna do this. So one side note on this, it is really difficult for me to record um, a, a D2L uh, video note while I'm doing a Zoom. So I'm gonna need you to imagine a few things because it requires me opening up more computers and setting up more cameras. And that is hard. Um, and is it, it's hard for me to show you because it ends up being on multiple devices and it's just strange. So just know that I'm gonna show you some that are pre-recorded, but I'm gonna show you how you get to those steps. So we will go ahead and take a look at my course. And I will make the font a whole lot bigger so that you can see it because it's really small. Okay, so video notes. Some of the places that I encourage the use of video notes are in your news, in discussions, uh, and when you're providing um, kind of a an introduction to a concept or if you're talking about in a in a Dropbox assignment or something, things that you know that students typically kind of get hung up on, um, especially places where you know no matter how many instructions that you give, they're going to ask questions. If you pre-record a video note that you address those questions, they're less likely to ask you those questions because they don't have to read quite as many of the in instructions because uh, you know they're going to read it right every word that you've ever said they're going to read every word um but if you have a video note and it's set they're much more likely to hit play and listen to those instructions um or see you talking about them um so it sometimes helps with some of those things especially with more difficult concepts that it might just take that extra little bit to kind of make that connection for them so i'm going to just walk you through the process of how you would create a video note the very cool thing about video note is you can put it anywhere in D2L that you have a dialog box. So to show you what one of those text dialog boxes is, um, from news, we're gonna just go, go to our news tool. We're gonna create a new item. And then when it pops up, this is that dialog box. So every single place in your course that you have one of these, you can create a video note. So we have them right here in news. Uh, you have them in discussion. It is the actual topic box that you have um, in your discussions. In Dropbox, if you put it, if you put instructions, if y'all have ever created a Dropbox folder within D2L and you're like, what is that instructions folder for? <laughs> this is it. Um, you can drop in your instructions in a video note right there because it is an active box. Um, you can do it anywhere in D2L where it says add a description. So on every module or sub module where it has dates and restrictions and then add a description, if you click on add a description, it opens up one of these boxes and you can type information directly in there or you can drop a, a video note in there or you can even pull something in from someplace else if you want. Um, but that is what these are. Um, so the way that you do a video note, it's the first little box on the left hand side that looks a little bit like the YouTube arrow. Uh, you would click on that. 
and this is where it's going to get a little different because I'm not actually going to record myself because of the camera thing. Um, please don't judge me. I thought about it and then I decided it was going to distract us. So when that insert stuff box opens up, you're just going to look through all the things that are available in here and you're looking for the add a video note. So the first time, the very first time that you click on add video note, a box is going to pop up that asks you if it can use your camera. The answer is yes. If you block the camera, it will not record and then video note won't work. And you'll have to go in and get it to forget it and then get it to do it again so that it will um, realize that, yes, I do actually want you to use my camera. Um, so you would click on this. So this one's going to yell at me because I, I can't, I don't have a camera right here. Um, but I'll show it. And if you watch for just a second, you'll see what it's going to look like when you first do it. So when you first pop it up, this pops up and there's a, a blue new recording box. That is literally all you have to do to do a video note recording is click that new recording box. You have up to 30 minutes. I'm going to go ahead right now and tell you try not to do 30 minutes because that is a lot for a video note. Um, try to keep video notes for like your like three to five minute quick things, maybe up to 10, depending on what it is. Um, but you really, it's not really the best place for long lectures. And I'll explain that again in just a second, but you can actually record for up to 30 minutes. Um, and it will caption. So after you do the new recording, you hit stop recording, make sure that you have expanded the box enough that you can see some extra points in there because you're going to want to hit next and you're going to want to do things like that. If you do your recording and you absolutely hate it, you can trash it and just start all over. You don't have to save a recording just because you did it. You can totally just trash it. If you don't know how to expand a box, make sure that you pull these little arrows, the, this little stacked lines that are down in the right hand corner and it will change the size of any box. Um, so if you need to expand your box, that's, that's how you do it, just in case you didn't know. Um, so from video note, once you have stopped your recording and you love it and it's perfect, and you hit next on that next page is where it asks you if you want to auto caption you simply push english and auto caption it takes it a little while so please know it's not instantaneous um you know like youtube can take if it's a really quick video it doesn't take very long but if it's more than about five minutes it can take 24 to 48 hours for it to finish its auto caption it just takes a little while because it has to think about it and put it in there um and then it automatically will drop your video wherever it was that you created it. So I'm going to show you that step because I already have something recorded. So if you have one that you recorded previously, either in this course or in another course, uh, which side note, if you copy from or you export import from another course into this course, it will bring your video notes with you because they are considered content. So it's, it goes with you from class to class to class, which is pretty awesome. You don't have to keep recreating things if it's things that you know that you're going to keep using. On that, if you did a video note last year, and since that time, you have dyed your hair green and have gotten new glasses and or contacts in the opposite direction of what you had, you may want to redo them because it doesn't look like you. So the students need to connect with who you are because at some point during the semester, they will see you as you are now. And so keep that in mind if you've changed a whole lot, like this time last year, I was not fully gray. So I'm having to go back and redo some videos in my life to embrace my natural, it is what it is. Um, the pandemic helped with that. I greatly appreciate it. Um, so just kind of think about that, but all of those do roll with you. So if you already have some that are recorded and you're ready to put them in a class, hit the video note search. And then if you actually remember the name that you gave it, you can type it in there. I don't have all that many and I don't know what their names are. So I'm just going to hit search. So there are four video notes that I have recorded that I have access to. Like you can actually see my hair changing color. Um, so there are four video notes that I have access to. So I want this one. This is the one I've decided I want to put in here. You simply click on that one. You hit next. There it is. It's right there for me to preview. I want to insert it. It is now in my news box. That is all it takes. 
Um, so we're going to give this a label. I'm ready to publish it because this is a development shell, so the whole world isn't going to see it. Ready to publish it. It's going up there. If I go back to my course homepage right now, that news item is right there. And that is just a little video link. And that is when we see that, we're drawn to that. We're drawn to video images. We're drawn to the fact that I can click this button. And here we have it. We are recording again, and it's got to be some weird stereo because I have multiple cameras. See? Multiple. <laughs> so that is how that works. That is how Video Note works. It is truly that simple to add it in to anywhere in your class that you have one of those dialogue boxes. So a couple of things about ways to create those opportunities for you and your students because now you know how to do those for news you know how to do those for um introduction discussions in terms of how to help students understand some concepts that you're going to cover and different things like that in, in terms of instructions it's really fantastic for the introductory discussion in any one of your courses um, it's also really great if you have group activities coming uh, and you want your group members to meet each other and get to know each other and talk a little bit about some of those things. Um, so putting them into a discussion board is really pretty awesome. Um, I can give you a personal example in the class I'm teaching this semester. I typically make it so that they don't have to put the video note. They can choose to do things in print. Um, this semester, I strongly encouraged video note um so that they would say that they needed to do it so i tried to do as many of them to do video note as possible um and the feedback that i've gotten from the students without asking is that they really enjoyed it because they got to see each other and they got to interact with each other and they kind of got to know a little bit more about each other because they saw each other's face and they got to see and connect in new and different ways um, so my students have really, really enjoyed um, being able to use the video note. Um, you can set it up so that when you do when you do it as a thread and you embed it into the thread, um, and I think there's actually a couple in this one, so you might be able to see what it looks like. Um, and if, yeah, so there's one. Um, so that is what they look like. Uh, when they're in a discussion thread. So it will show up as videos kind of stacked on top of each other. Um, I, I hear that a lot of people like that concept because it gives students a way to communicate with each other. It also gives you a way to kind of see and get to know them so that you're feeling more connected to who they are. Um, I'm just going to give you a little side note. If you're using outside of D2L resources, in order to create that video introduction opportunity, you need to be aware of FERPA and accessibility requirements. If you are requiring students to use a device that is not supported through MTSU and ITD and through our single sign-on, you're potentially creating opportunities where you could have some issues with FERPA and accessibility. And we can go into that at some other point if y'all want to, but just know that because video note is turned on, because video note is available to all faculty and students, and because it is pretty easy to drop into any activity that you're doing in your D2L class, it is strongly encouraged that you use resources that are in D2L instead of requiring students to go to activities outside of D2L. Because if you are requiring them to go to activities outside of D2L, you are requiring them to accept the terms of service of that company. Um, and that may not have been vetted through our institution's legal or contracts office. So just be aware of that. So video note, it's already embedded. It's through the single sign on. So it's right there and it avoids some of those potential issues for you. Um, so when we send this video out later, this event out later, uh, we will attach some resources for you that are step by step instructions for how students need to create one as well as how faculty need to create one. So we have it from both perspectives so that you can as yourself kind of get in and practice and then you can also post it for your students for the, the first time that they use it. I actually connect 
the how to into my first introduction discussion so the students can click right on it and see how to use it. Um, so before we go any further and start asking some questions, there are a couple of points about video note that I kind of want to make sure that we cover. Safari, um, several of you have Apple devices. Um, I do not, so I can say several of you and openly acknowledge that that is not me. Um, so several of you have Apple devices. Um, Safari doesn't like video note. It's not actually the other way around, it's Safari. Um, there are some security settings in Safari that make it very unhappy and it does not communicate. Now, I think there are some people that have enough technical knowledge that they probably know how to go in and reset some things in the back end of Safari or potentially even an operating system in your iPhone and get Safari to work. That seems a little scary to me. Um, so the easier way to fix that is to download Chrome or Firefox because it works great in Chrome and Firefox. Um, Safari is the only one that we know. Well, I assume it doesn't work in Internet Explorer, but please tell me you're not actually using Internet Explorer and that would be an end to that. So, um, so Safari is the only one that we know that it's a problem. And the reason that I kind of tell you this, every one of my students that has ever had a hard time with video notes since I started using it has an iDevice um, and they breeze right past that sentence where it says this does not work in Safari. Uh, and then they want to know why it doesn't work. So once we tell them, hey, make sure you're using Chrome or Firefox and it it should work right away. Um, most of them have figured out that that's what it is. Some of them are, are not going to download a new app. So um, it either means they'll need to find another computer or you have to be OK with with them creating a video through another device and then um, uploading it unlisted to YouTube and then posting a YouTube video um or however they want to post it but i devices uh and apple devices if they are creating an iMovie, people who don't have apple devices can't see your movie so you're gonna have to convert it into something that other people can see video note automatically changes it because you can record it from anywhere and anything and it's directly into d2l instead of in um movie player or in movie, iMovie, or whatever it is that you're using on your device, it is in D2L and so it auto converts. It also will auto shift its size based on the device that you are viewing it on. Um, so that part is helpful. Okay, so that is the gist of what video note is and kind of what I was going to talk about today. Um, so we will, we got uh, probably about 20 minutes which is awesome. I'm excited for us. So we got about 20 minutes um, and I see a whole lot um, of things going on in the chat. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop my screen screen share for now. Um, but we can screen share again later if we need to and see what's going on in the chat. So Karen, do we have any specific questions before I start scrolling through it? Um, most of the questions you, you've answered in some shape or form. So there, there are a couple of questions about the Apple or I devices. Um, we'll have to check in to see if, uh, I think somebody asked the question about um, whether iPads, yes, you can get Google Chrome for iPads and iOS. I'm just not sure if that would work with D2L. We, I can investigate that and get back to you. Um, since I am an I person or a, a, a fruit person, I don't know if that was yeah. what we used to call ourselves before. Um, the other question that has come up is about downloading the video um, yeah. and whether you can, whether students can download the video. No. No. And that, that was, I yeah. couldn't find a place to do that. It didn't no. look like when I tried to do it in a student view. Um, looks like you get a pointer back to D2L, so you're within the D2L space. Is that correct? Yeah. It's within D2L. You cannot download it. You can you as faculty can copy it to another course or you can export it and then import it in another course, but the videos will not download out of D2L. Students can record them anywhere at any of those spaces. And then if they need to add them in more than one place, they can do that same video note search or you can, um, but it can't, it doesn't come out of D2L. So. And how do you, yeah, yeah. go ahead. I was gonna say you can export it, but any exporting it unless you're putting it in another D2L location as a faculty member and students can't do that. Um, unless you're putting it in another D2L 
location is just a bunch of computer gibberish. So nobody would understand it anyway. It has to be, it comes out of D2L, it goes back into D2L. And then to delete a recorded video note, is it just easiest to go in and edit that item that you've added the video note? Or is there a way to actually delete the video after you've created it? Uh, I, I'm screen sharing it. I've never actually tried to delete a video that's in my video note once I have accepted it. So I probably need to check in on that and see how to go about doing it. But um, I will show you quickly how to, no, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to edit. Um, if you go in and you edit the location where it's listed, like this is in a discussion thread. Um, if you want to take a video note out that you put in, as long as you are in that text box, um, oops, uh, as long as your little, see my little mouse is clicking down here. Uh, look, you just hit backspace and it went away. And then when you update it, well, it's empty, so it's mad at me. But um, so all you would need to do at that point is just save it and it's gone. Um, so in this one, I'll just cancel it and put it right back so that you can see that it's there. But that it's very easy to remove it out of anywhere that you are because D2L treats it just like any other content. You really do just hit backspace or edit or delete, um, depending on which side your little blinky is on and whether or not you're using an Apple or a non-Apple device um, and then it it gets rid of it really quick but I've not actually tried to delete something out of the video note area um, I would guess you probably could but I, they don't take a whole lot of space so I'm not sure is there a way to get to that video note area outside of the actual item that you added the note to so like the question in um, chat is uh, are video notes saved in files or are they sort of just out there in the in the magic universe of D2L? They're in the magic universe of D2L. They're in content um, when you go to copy. Um, so, and I can show you that kind of, I'll show you really quick. Um, when you go to copy and you go to the import export copy from that cog up in the top right corner, in case nobody knows how to do it, that's where you do it. It's beautiful. Um, you hit the import export copy and then you go to um, copy something. Let me, I'm pretty sure there's some in my, oh, I've got a lot of stuff. Um, in, I don't wanna accidentally copy the whole thing over. So we're gonna do this as select components instead of the whole thing. So I don't like blow up my development shell. Um, so you'll see that there aren't any in here um, because it's actually in the content information. So it is actually in your content um, and it will pull it. I think it's a content. Uh, and so, and then you have to go look for it in the item that it's in and pull it that way if you want to pull just one. Um, if you're copying the whole course, it'll copy all of them at one time and it'll pull them out. So you actually have to go look and see where it is to pull it. Um, if you want to just pull that one thing, but then you can copy it over and move it. Um, so that kind of answers the how to get it out question. Um, but the other question was, can I, I can get it anywhere in the class, right? Like anywhere, I, like if I created one in the news item, I could get to it anywhere. Right, that was the other question. Was, right, um, right, if you wanted to use it in more than one place in your class. Right. So um, in here, um, oh, I need to update this, this is old. Um, in here, um, I would simply click the same one and then go to that same video note search. And I think this is the one that we used in the last one. We hit next, there it is. We insert it, it is now right there. Um, and then I realized, oh, I put it in the wrong module. Oh, hey, it's gone. <laughs> so I really wanted to put it down here in module two. So let me click in this little box here. Um, and I, this is where I meant to put it. So I'll go there and I click the video note search again, hit the button, pick that one, next, insert, and now it's in module two. Um, so it, it takes a second 
the first time you record them more because when I go to record, that is a whole lot of me looking at me. Um, the, when I go to record them, it usually takes me a second to be like, well, with examples, I'm like, blah, 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 and then show y'all the example. But if I'm really recording it for a class, I usually have to take a couple tries before I feel good about what I did. Um, and so, uh, so that part takes me a minute, but once it's created, it takes no time at all. It is that fast to add a video note that you previously created as many places as you want in your courses. Um, so it's really fast and easy, and it really does create that, that opportunity um, for them. And, and I know we talked a, little, a lot about how to create video notes, but really a lot of what I want y'all to get from this is just the connection it makes with your students and the connection that they get to have with each other, but really how you are able to connect with them on a different level um, so that you're not feeling like you're in a bubble and they're in a bubble. Y'all are actually all in the same place and communicating together about learning experiences. What other questions are out there? Uh, there was a question about whether you could record your screen on video note. So it's not a screen recorder, yeah. it's just a video. Yes, yes. It is solely meant for the purpose of doing quick little recordings where you can, you know, give a little bit of information, uh, talk just a little bit about topics. It is not meant to be a lecture capture activity. Um, if you're looking to do lecture capture, then you'll want to use the um, Panato options, or if you're in an opportunity where you can record your Zooms. Um, if you don't like those, there's always some other services out there like Screencast-O-Matic or things like that that you may feel more comfortable using. Um, the upside of Panato is that it, it's integrated. Um, the downside is everybody doesn't like everything. So you got to find the one that you like best. <laughs> that makes you feel the most confident about what you're doing and, and how you're creating that information. Um, and one other thing on that, that at this point, the captions and video note are not, um, the edit is not turned on. So your captions are not gonna be 100%. If you have somebody in your class that needs the uh, accommodation to that level, um, then video note is not necessarily gonna be your best resource. Um, because we cannot at this point edit those. Uh, hopefully that will be coming in the near future. Um, so just remember if there is somebody that has the accessibility accommodation that they need something captioned at 100%, you're gonna wanna use um, video recordings in ways that you can either upload them into to YouTube to get them captioned that way for editing or in Panato so that you can um, edit your captions in there or well, or any of the other programs that you might use, but video note is not going to get you to 100% accommodation for accessibility needs. Just know that. And one of the questions, sorry that I missed it before, um, can you edit the video note or do you have to record it all over again? You have to record it all over again. And that's part of why I said keep these short and simple. If you record a 30 minute video and you realize into it that you mess something up at like minute 28, you either just kind of have to roll past it and be like, hi, or you got to redo the whole thing. Um, so for me in Kim land, I fully embrace the lack of perfection uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it's exhausting to try for perfection in videos um, and you wear yourself out. Uh, but two, if you mess up just a little bit, students feel a little bit more confident when they're doing it. Um, because they don't have quite as much of a sense of this has to be absolutely perfect and professionally done. It's okay if I mispronounce a word or I forget what I'm saying and had to um and ah uh, and a little bit of verbal pause for a minute. It kind of helps them a little bit with that confidence. Um, and that is actually one of the things too that comes from using the video notes is the more they use them, the more comfortable they feel with them. Uh, it also will impact how comfortable they feel if you are requiring them to do uh, Zoom presentations at a later point in the semester or creating their own Panopto or um, screen sharing presentations, if they've been using video note and doing a couple of minute little presentations or videos of themselves in that, when they get to the point that they're doing one that is higher stakes, 
um, they aren't quite as nervous about it. So you're kind of creating a sense of um, feeling confident and that they're not as anxious uh, when it gets to that. So if you think about that in terms of what we were talking about at the beginning with creating significant learning and thinking about feelings and connecting with humans and creating learners, if you're giving them opportunities early and often to create um, low stakes, multiple use information with in terms of video note, then when they have that high stakes, this presentation is worth 100 points in your class, they're already feeling more comfortable um, because they've had that opportunity. And so you've really kind of met them in a place that you've taken them to a new level of confidence and where they they feel they can do better. Um, so that is one of the side things of video note is that because it can easily be a multi multi process multi time use uh, for low stakes, it helps people feel a lot better about it. Not everybody likes to be on video. I do not have that problem. I'm totally fine with this, but not everybody's like me and I get that. So um, I know some of my students when they do it, they're very anxious the first time, but by the end of the semester, they're like, all right, video note, here we go. So they feel better. I feel better. They have gotten an opportunity to do something they wouldn't have normally gotten to do. So yeah, what other question? Well, that actually kind of circles back to something that I apologize if I mispronounce your name. I think it's Lisa. Uh, Raven asked about, you know, when you learn about your students, the space that they're inhabiting in terms of their physical space around them, um, what assumptions might we make based upon their living circumstances and how do we um, avoid bias in that way? Have you had any experience or conversations about, you know, for me, it's been the conversation about requiring students to have their cameras on during a Zoom session. I'm not sure if anybody's talked about it with a video note, um, but I do know that there, I've got a couple of resources that I'll share with the group um, that are about how people have addressed um, that concept or that idea of, you know, how do we avoid bias if we, you know, see what's in our students' backgrounds or um, the judgments that we might make, but I'd love to hear everybody else's conversation about that as well. Uh, so we actually have some MT MTSU policies. We should probably share with you, Karen, about what that, about those requirements. So um, in terms of video note, that is one of the things that um, I address when I am doing my introductory video note for the video note discussion, for their introduction discussion, that I specifically say, um, I'd like for you to turn on the video. I, I need you to do video note. It requires video. Um, but you can do your video note from anywhere. Um, and what I've learned from that is that I've had a couple of students who've done their video note from their car, or they've done their video note from standing outside by a tree, or they've done their video note from wherever it is that they feel the most comfortable, because video note isn't one that you can choose to turn off the video and it still work. It's just video. Um, and so if I have a student that really doesn't feel comfortable using video, I absolutely let them post in print. Um, but one of the things I've noticed is that a lot of times the people who post in print after everybody else has done a video, they will go back and do a video. Um, so yes, you got to be aware and you got to address it. Um, and I try in my video introduction to say, this is an opportunity for us to talk to you. And I've also noticed that um, at least with mine, a lot of my students will select their space based on how much they want to share. Um, so like for me, I have zero problem with everybody seeing this whole room. Um, but if I turn my monitor this way, um, you will only see a wall that has nothing on it. So, uh, well, I say it has nothing on it. It, it does actually have a post-it note on it. Um, but it's a... <laughs> It's the community to do this, um, but that's it. That's the only thing on this wall. So, and that is one of the big things is I've noticed that students will record it where they feel comfortable showing you and having that conversation upfront and honest in the beginning about videoing where you feel comfortable showing your space is what's the most important thing that they don't have to feel like they have to show everything. Um, I'm one of those people that would like take you on a grand tour of my house, but not everybody's like me and I, accept that. I'm okay. So <laughs> I hope that answers that question just a little bit. <coughs> I believe that was all that was in the chat. So if there are other questions, feel free to unmute yourself and ask away. 
and I will stop my sharing again too. Um, so yeah, any other questions, anything y'all want to know about? Y'all need a tour of my house. It's not actually on a portable device, so that might actually be a bit of a challenge, but <laughs> we'll try. What else can we do for y'all? Any questions? If you're done with your video note questions, I'm going to hit stop on the recording and then know that you have the two of us here as the captive audience if you have other questions. Um, but we will be sending out some resources and we'll send the, I'll send the PowerPoint. I told y'all it was quick. It was like four slides. Um, the PowerPoint and um, we'll, I'll send you um, Fink's significant learning verbs so that y'all can have that. And then as soon as the video uploads to our YouTube channel, we'll send that too. Um, we'll probably just send everything to Scott or Sheila um, so they can send that all out together. But yeah, no, okay. No more, no more video, no questions. I will hit stop, but we'll still be here, so.